This is Cameron Chai from azonano.com and today I'm bringing you another episode of Azo TV and we're speaking to Jeremy Warren who's going to talk to us about their NS500 instrument and the impact of new European legislation on nanomaterials. Cameron, thanks a lot. Yeah, I think it's, uh, as a European, perhaps we should report on the, uh, uh, the uh, EU's recent publication of a definition of nanomaterials as it uh, refers to nanoparticle characterization. Those people that watch European legislation uh, from a distance see lots and lots of changes over the years, but this is important. So in October last year, the EU published a definition of nanomaterials. This definition is a missing piece, as we see it, that a load of legislators are waiting for in all sorts of areas of uh, labeling, ecotoxicology, uh, environmental uh, monitoring, uh, occupational health, to begin writing legislation which is going to which is going to uh, which is going to impact directly on nano. Now, this definition. Let me tell you about the definition. The definition doesn't actually refer to toxicology at this stage, but it's but it's a start. The definition tells us uh, that a material is a nanomaterial if 50% of the particles are between one and 100 nanometers. Now, there's two important things in there. The first is it's a particle count, and secondly, it gives them parameters parameters below 100 nanometers. Now, there are plenty of uh, reasons why a definition like that can be criticized, but certainly from our point of view, we think it's here to stay and we think that this will be important over the next few years. Now, let me declare my interest here, of course. The definition of nano as it's uh, in this form, where you're counting particles, fits ideally with the sort of technology that we have, nanoparticle tracking analysis. Now, we wouldn't claim to be able to count particles down to one nanometer, but certainly in the range 100 down to 30 or 40 nanometers, uh, we seem to be just about the only show in town. And perhaps a combination of nanosite with occasional use of electron microscopy is a, is a, is a way of uh, addressing this new, this new definition. So that's where, that's where we've got to. Uh, the definition was published last year, and it's already uh, interesting to see the French government are looking for mandatory labeling on nanomaterials, and their work began, uh, their, their paper went out for consultation, which is completed at the end of March, so things are moving quite quickly. All right, now, now you talk about this legislation, which seems very Eurocentric. Does it, what, what about the rest of the world? Okay, that's a good question. So this is a European piece of uh, regulation, potential regulation, uh, and, and yeah, it is, it is confined to the European Union. Um, uh, I've heard uh, clearly the EPA and the FDA have both publicly said that they're not looking for a definition of nanomaterials. They want to concentrate on the properties which are much closer to toxicity and to understanding toxicity, which is uh, obviously is an enormous subject. I can understand that view, um, and I've heard it expressed as well uh, by an American commentator in this field that the United States doesn't need English films, doesn't need French cheeses and certainly doesn't need a, a European definition of nanomaterials. That's one view, but I think that this is important enough and the, U the European Union is seen as uh, uh, best demonstrable practice by non-US non -US uh, countries that I'm, I think this will stick in the future and we'll see more of this. But what about the fact that, that obviously bulk materials and nanomaterials, even with the same chemical makeup, seem to have different properties? Does, it, does that make any sense? That well, that whole, yeah, that's, the whole, that, that's really where this is coming from. If you believe the promise of nano, that when, uh, part, when uh, bulk materials are in much smaller sizes, that the, the properties are uh, novel, and of course they are, you only have to look at titanium dioxide making a, a transparent uh, sun, sun cream instead of a white paste when it's at small sizes, then you can't accept the toxicology data that you've got for the bulk materials as being extended to the nano. I, I don't think you can do that. So uh, we've said for a long, well, we've said it's been understood for a long time that a robust framework for understanding toxicology of nano is, is a prerequisite to, to nano, to major nano investment. And I think that's the way things are going. So Jeremy, if anyone wants any more information about the NS500 and its ability to count nanoparticles, they can find that on your website? Yes, yeah, there's plenty of papers there and they're all referenced at, at uh, nanosite.com. All right, Jeremy, thanks for taking a few minutes and uh, informing us all about uh, new European legislation to do with nanomaterials. Thanks very much, Cameron.